This voice annotated PowerPoint will be about pyelonephritis in pregnancy. I am Sarah Dodders Katz, an OBGYN physician. I hope that by the end of this VAP, you will have an improved understanding of the pathogenesis of pyelonephritis in pregnancy. We will also discuss the epidemiology, risk factors, disease presentation, diagnosis, treatment, and post treatment prophylaxis for this condition. Finally, we will review the common complications that may result from pyelonephritis in pregnancy. Pyelonephritis affects approximately 1 to 2 percent of all pregnancies. It is the most common non obstetric cause of hospitalization during pregnancy. Risk factors include young maternal age, being a prima gravida, having sickle cell trait, having asymptomatic bacteria or urinary tract infection during pregnancy. It is most likely to occur in the second trimester. In order to fully understand the pathogenesis of pyelonephritis during pregnancy, we must first review the urologic changes that occur as a normal part of pregnancy. Not only do the kidneys themselves actually increase in size during pregnancy, but a woman's glomerular filtration rate, her GFR, also increases somewhere between 30 and 50 percent. Additionally, progesterone levels increase, resulting in smooth muscle relaxation. This leads to less ureteral peristalsis and increased urinary stasis. There is also mechanical obstruction of the ureters secondary to uterine compression, more on the right than on the left. These factors all contribute to the dilation of the ureters and the renal pelvis, and as a result, genitourinary tract is somewhat primed for an ascending infection. Thus, conditions that are often benign in non-pregnant women, such as asymptomatic bacteria or urinary tract infections, are much more dangerous during pregnancy and thus manage very aggressively. The microbiology of pyelonephritis is the usual urinary tract pathogens. The most common causative organism is E. coli. However, gram-positive bacteria, such as group B strep and staph species, also account for a decent percentage, approximately 10%. About 5% of these infections are due to gram-negative bacteria. Clinically, women with pyelonephritis in pregnancy are often quite ill-appearing. They present with fevers, chills, nausea, vomiting, and frequently tenderness at the costovertebral angle. Some women will have urinary symptoms such as dysuria, hematuria, frequency, or urgency, though others will not. Other presenting symptoms may include tachycardia, tachypnea, malaise, and anorexia. When a woman presents with symptoms concerning for pyelonephritis, a complete history and physical should be done. Other causes of abdominal pain in pregnancy must also be ruled out, including gastroenteritis, biliary disease, and appendicitis. Helpful laboratory studies include a complete blood count, urine analysis, and urine culture. A comprehensive metabolic panel is helpful for two reasons. One, it may reveal electrolyte abnormalities resulting from persistent vomiting. And secondly, normal liver function tests and bilirubin will help to rule out abdominal pathology. Patients that have a fever, CVA tenderness, and a urinary analysis suspicious for infection almost always have pyelonephritis and should be managed accordingly. Because this infection can be life-threatening, patients with suspected pyelonephritis should be admitted to the hospital and treated with intravenous antibiotics. Therapy should be initiated as soon as a presumptive diagnosis is made. Ceftriaxone is usually the antibiotic of choice, but cefazolin, or ampicillin and gentamicin may be used as well. Supportive therapy is also very important. Antipyretics should be used to maintain a temperature less than 38 degrees. Hydration is also crucial. Patients should receive a bolus of IV fluids and then be placed on maintenance fluids, in addition to oral hydration. Clinically, most patients improve within 24 to 48 hours. Fevers resolve, and CVA tenderness usually goes away entirely or at least improves. Once a patient is afebrile for 24 to 48 hours, they can be transitioned to oral antibiotics. As previously mentioned, pyelonephritis is very dangerous and even potentially fatal during pregnancy. 20% of women with pyelonephritis become septic. 
these patients are at particular risk for ARDS, especially compared to the non-pregnant patient. Thus, if a woman becomes tachypnic, threshold for a chest x-ray should be very low and close monitoring is needed. Though renal dysfunction and renal failure are possible, these are much less common complications. For the patient that does not improve within 24 hours or respond to antibiotics, blood cultures and a renal ultrasound should be obtained, as this patient may have a perinephric abscess or other pathology. It is also important to remember that these patients are pregnant. Many will have fetal tachycardia as well as contractions. Contractions are usually related to dehydration as well as peritoneal inflammation, and as long as the infection is actively managed, preterm labor and preterm delivery rates are low. Long-term fetal outcomes in women who are actively managed are similar to those outcomes of normal pregnancies. Once a woman is stable and afebrile for 24 to 48 hours, she can be transitioned to oral antibiotics. These should continue for 7 to 10 days. By this time, the sensitivities are usually back and the appropriate antibiotic can be selected. Once that regimen is done, the patient needs to be on suppressive therapy for the remainder of her pregnancy. This is most often nitrofurantoin nightly. However, ampicillin can be used as well. In summary, pyelonephritis is a very dangerous infection in pregnancy. It is the most common cause of non-obstetric hospitalization in the pregnant population. Most commonly, it is caused by E. coli. The presentation is similar to that of non-pregnant patients, including fevers, chills, nausea, and vomiting. Some women will have CVA tenderness, others will not. Some women will have urinary symptoms, others do not. If pyelonephritis is even suspected, the patient should be admitted to the hospital and started on antibiotics. She will also need antipyretic therapy as well as aggressive fluid resuscitation. Though these women can become septic and develop ARDS, most will improve within 24 hours. Once stabilized, these women do need oral antibiotics and then suppressive therapy for the remainder of their pregnancy. For those that do not improve, one might consider further imaging or blood cultures. Importantly, when pyelonephritis is actively managed, the overall outcome of pregnancy is similar to that of healthy pregnancies.